Supplemental. I don't care about the tunnels, or the secrets they might hide. That's not strictly true, I suppose. I do have a burning curiosity as to what is down there, but my primary focus must be on who killed Gertrude Robinson, and I do not believe for a moment that it was a wall-moving spectre from the depths of the earth. No, far more likely it's one of my colleagues. Elias is a prime suspect, but it could have been any of them. I have told Martin the second tape recorder was lost in the attack. Having two means I can make two tapes from each recording, one containing the main statement and notes which will be stored in the archive, and the other containing the statement, notes, and this supplement, which will chronicle my own investigations. These tapes will be hidden. If you're hearing this, I assume you're my replacement following my death or disappearance, and have received instructions on where to find them. I have little more to add to this initial account, as I have only recently returned to my position in full and haven't had time to begin personal investigations. My statement was, of course, completely true, though I have deliberately overstated my interest in the tunnels. If my colleagues believe that to be my main focus, they may let their guard down. This level of paranoia is new to me, but I'm learning fast. Trust can get you killed. End supplement. Supplement. I've been watching Martin. He's been very attentive to my needs and recovery since I returned to work, almost to the exclusion of his own tasks. Previously I might have ascribed such ministrations to his own lax work ethic, but in the stress of Prentice's attack I am sure I glanced moments of competence or even cunning that are beyond what his previous work would indicate. Is he playing the fool? purposefully failing in his tasks to delay or hinder my investigations? It's possible. He has also shown remarkable interest in my own theories as to who killed Gertrude. I have thus far diverted him by saying I believe it to be whatever is lurking in the tunnels below, but he seems unsatisfied by that response. I'm glad he's moved out of the archives, as it gives me a chance to work here without his constant presence. Also because he managed to leave some of his possessions behind. For the most part, it's just a few books of relatively awful poetry. There are a few pieces I feel could almost have been affecting if his style wasn't so obviously enamoured with Keats. But there is an unfinished letter addressed to his mother in Devon, in which he mentions that he is worried about the others finding out I've been lying. It may be nothing, some inconsequential deception or other, after all it is ostensibly written to his mother. But if it was actually to be sent to someone else, I will keep my eye on Martin. End supplement. I really shouldn't be talking about it on tape. That's entirely up to you. You came to us. Yeah. Just want to talk about it with someone, you know? Very much so. I'm breaking the law by talking to you. You understand that? I think so. Some sort of non-disclosure agreement, I believe. Pretty much. Do you need my real name? Technically, no, but from what I understand of your situation, you'd be rather identifiable even without it. This is not the first time we've had statements from witnesses in sensitive positions. I'll mark the tape and file it for internal use only, which means it comes under the Institute's own very strict NDA policy and cannot be referenced or requested by external agencies or authorities such as the police. That's the best you can offer? I'm afraid so. Though I remind you again, you are under no obligation to make a statement if it makes you uncomfortable. Or if you're worried about your voice being recognised, you could always write it down. I'll make an audio copy later. I'm not really big on writing. I'm more of a talker. Odd choice of career, then. I hear there are lots of forms to fill in. Not much, since I became Section 31. Yes, you mentioned this... Section 30... You know what, we will cover it in the statement. Right. So, just to return to uh, Gertrude's body, that's currently considered a, par a weird case. I mean, we're investigating it as a murder because that's what it is. But you guys are basically an automatic Section 31, so I've got almost no help on it. Maybe that's why I wanted to make a statement, you know? I can't talk to anybody about this stuff, and then I come here and you've got all this... All these people's experiences listen to and file away. It's... I don't know. 
I've been meaning to come in ever since that call out. Mm. Yes. So, um, so no one is helping you with Gertrude's case? No oversight? Not really. I tried making the argument that the murder didn't seem to connect to any of your paranormal business, at least not directly, but nope. I've got a shot corpse, three boxes of cassettes, and Daisy, who's CID now, which I suppose means it's technically her problem, but she's now the only detective who's already sectioned, so she's always way too busy. As far as I know, neither of us have even had a chance to actually start listening to the tapes. Interesting. Uh, li- Supplemental. I have convinced Basira to give me access to the tapes. It won't be many or often, as they are currently police evidence and thus hard to subtly remove. And she can't necessarily guarantee the ones I get will be the most pertinent to the case, but it is still a significant victory. I only ever spoke to Gertrude once or twice during her time as archivist. I was very new. I don't remember what her voice sounded like. Part of me worries about what I might find on these tapes, but a bigger part of me worries I will find nothing. This uncertainty is wearing on me. And I don't know how much more I can take. And supplemental. Supplemental. This is the first of the tapes I've received from Basira. Luckily, it appears that Gertrude was not as lax in properly marking these tapes as she has been the rest of the archive. While it provides some interesting context for Leanne Denikin's statement and this strange circus, I will admit to some disappointment it doesn't address any of my more pressing questions about Gertrude's tapes. Why did she begin recording them? And why stop? If she'd been doing so right up until her death, she would have likely gotten through much of the archive, and moreover, I wouldn't have had to find this tape player tucked away in the storage room, covered in dust and cobwebs. Moreover, she clearly knows a lot more about what is going on than I had previously assumed. This is far from the first time she has encountered the other circus, or the circus of the other, or however it translates. I suppose I'll have to return the tape to Basira and wait until she can get me another one. It is infuriating to have to simply wait like this, but there is little else I can do. Additionally, I think someone may have found these secret tapes. They do not appear to have been disturbed, but the drawer in which I kept them is slightly more open than I left it. I have not mentioned it to the others, as if any of them did open my drawer for innocent reasons, then I don't want to let them know there is anything significant about the tapes inside. I have prized up one of the floorboards, and will be hiding them beneath there from now on. End supplement. Supplemental. I've been doing some digging into Tim, watching him. He's certainly doing his job far better than I'd have expected given his recent experiences. There's just one thing I don't understand. Why is he working for the Institute? A first in anthropology from Trinity College, five successful years spent climbing the ladder at a major publishing house, and then out of the blue he decides to come work for us. Why? I can't find any other indication of an interest in the paranormal, nothing to indicate this area of study appealed to him. Why stay after everything that happened with Prentice? Is it just loyalty, or could it be something? Hey, I just wanted to check if you wanted a cup of tea. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, are you recording? I, I thought you were done for the day. I, I was, I am. It's. Uh, Why do you have pictures of Tim? I, it, uh, it's a, a performance review thing, going over some files for it. But that looks like a picture of his house. Confidential files that you legally you shouldn't really be looking at them. Please, uh, please That's leave, right, right, Martin. Right. Did you want that tea? No, thank you, Martin. I need to find a better place to do these recordings. End supplemental. Supplemental. Someone else has been going down into the tunnels. When I came in yesterday, I noticed that the trap door appeared to have been disturbed. It was unlocked. I confronted the others, but they all deny it, of course. Someone must think there is more down there of value, unless they're trying to hide something. Searching or hiding, it could be either. I might try to set up a camera to watch the trap door, if I can find somewhere effective to hide it. I did go down there to see if I could find anything, but it seems much as it did last time. The only difference now is all the spider webs. They seem to have spread down there. I think I saw some of the larger specimens actually eating the remains of the worms. It was a disconcerting sight. And I left almost immediately. 
and supplemental. Statement of Helen Richardson regarding... Uh, how would you describe it? Miss Richardson? Uh, what? Your experience, how would you summarize it? Uh, um, well, I've been, I've been trying to draw you a map, but it doesn't, it doesn't work. Right. Statement of Helen Richardson regarding a new door in the house she was selling. Statement recorded direct from subject, 2nd October 2016. Statement begins. Miss Richardson? There are no left turns. Look, look, none. It just, it just turns right. It doesn't make any sense. No, it wasn't a spiral because you could, you could also go forward. I mean, I, I did mostly just forward and the paths never got shorter. Like you were coming to a centre, they just kept going. It doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Look at it. Oh, Miss Richardson. Look at it! You're right. This map doesn't make any sense. After a few turns. It becomes a mess of impossible lines. Yes, but it will be very useful for our investigation if you could start at the beginning. Give us some context. Tell me how it got started. What do you want to know? There wasn't a door. And then there was. Perhaps. Leave it with us. We'll do some digging and see what we can find. You believe me, then? I, uh... Yes. Yes, I think I do. One thing, though. You say you don't remember the man's name. I, I think he told me, but I just... I it wasn't can't... Michael, was it? Yes. Michael! That was it. Do you know him? Maybe. We'll make some inquiries and get back to you, Miss Richardson. Thank you for your time. Right. Well, I'll just leave you to it then. Sasha! Sorry, did you call? Uh... I just had a statement from someone who claims they met your Michael. Michael? The distorted Michael? The very same. I don't think we re-recorded your statement on him, did we? Did we need to? It was one of the tapes that vanished during the attack. Oh. Well, I can give it again if you'd like, but I haven't seen him since. And you can't think of any further insights? Nothing you forgot to mention last time? I don't think so, no. Hmm. What are you doing at the moment? Reorganising your discredited section. It's a bit of a mess. If I may say so, John, I feel you've been a bit less conscientious about it since you got back. Oh, no, that's fair. Sorry. Let me know once you're finished. I'd very much like you on this case. Yes, will do. Do you even know um, they're lying to you? I'm sorry, I didn't... Can I help you? This place is off limits. I disagree. Who let you in here? Let. <laughs> I'm afraid that isn't how this works. You're him? Yes. Michael. That is a real name. Are you here to kill me? No. Oh. Uh, why, are, why are you here? I am simply collecting what is mine, Archivist. The one who enters my domain. Miss Richardson? You own those hallways? What a... Fascinating question. Does your hand in any way own your stomach? In any case, it doesn't matter. The wanderer had a brief respite, but it's over now. Well, you're too late. She's gone. <laughs> yes. Uh, did you notice which door she left through? Yes. Wait. No, there was... A... Uh, there has never been a door there, Archivist. Your mind plays tricks on you. Let her go. <laughs> no. Get her back here! <laughs> Are you going to attack me? Ah! 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> who the hell are you? I am not a who, Archivist. I am a what? A who requires a degree of identity I can't ever attain. So, Michael isn't your real name? There is no such thing as a real name. What are you talking about? 
I am talking about myself. It's not something I'm used to doing, so I'm sorry if I'm not very good at it. You decided to appear down here and stab me anyway. Oh, I wanted to talk to you. I intervened to save you before. I am I'm interested in what happens next. Yes, well, thank you for that, I suppose. And you still haven't told me why you intervened at all. <laughs> I'm normally neutral, yes, but the loss of this place would have unbalanced the struggle too early. I'm keen to see how it progresses. You make it sound like there's a war. <laughs> then I will say nothing further. I wouldn't wish to tarnish your ignorance prematurely. Goodbye, archivist. Wait! Ah! Uh, 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 Michael? Michael? End recording. Supplemental. Michael's visit last week has been playing on my mind. What struggle is he talking about? And if there is one, what's his stake in it? What even is he? Listening back over his visit, I am also struck by something that in the confusion of his arrival completely passed me by the first time. His words were a warning that I cannot trust Sasha. That she was lying about something. Of course, it is becoming rapidly apparent in my investigation that I can trust nobody. But of all of them, Sasha seemed the least suspicious. I can't find any evidence she ever even met Gertrude. And her working here seems the natural progression of a lifelong interest in the paranormal. She's been doing her work with the same diligence as before the Prentice incident, and indeed of all of them seems to have been the least affected. That said, she did lose the tape documenting her experience. Or is she lying about her meeting with Michael, leaving things out? Or is Michael simply messing with my head, as indeed seemed to be the entire purpose of his visit? On another note, I need to be subtler in my inquiries. Here follows a recording I managed to make of a short meeting Elias requested. I don't enjoy having to have these meetings, John. You know I don't. Well, I'm sorry you're compelled to. I assume you've had another complaint? Yes. Who from this time? Was Dr. Elliot offended I declined to take his apple? Was I too rude to Michael? Who's Michael? No, it's from your team. What? Martin and Tim have both approached me. Apparently you've been spying on them. Spying on them? Of course not. No, it's just I've been worried about their mental health following Prentice's attack, so I've been... Keeping a closer eye on them than usual. Tim says you were watching his house. I, well, that's just not true. Well, what matters is your team thinks that it could be. Look, I... I know finding Gertrude's body hit you hard. I understand, but you need to leave this alone. It isn't their mental health that's under scrutiny right now. Fine. Fine. Is that all? Yes. I need to be more careful about the others noticing my investigations especially if I have further cause to watch their homes. More importantly, though, I think Elias just moved to the top of my suspect list. I wonder what he's hiding. End supplement. The police aspect of this statement has been the hardest to follow up. Sasha has recently been having problems with her normal backdoor access to police records, as, despite IT's best efforts, her computer has broken yet again, making this the third time in the last two months. Until we can source some more reliable equipment, we may have to rely on other methods. Basira has refused to compromise her position any further, so we're having to rely on Tim's involvement with certain staff at the police records office. Apparently he is involved both with one of the young ladies there, as well as the gentleman who manages the other shift. This is useful for acquiring information, but I am uncomfortable with how easily discovered this arrangement might be. The last thing I want is for the Archives to become involved in pointless personal drama. Supplemental. Elias Bouchard is a difficult man to pin down, certainly since he became head of the Institute in 1996, taking over from James Wright, who ran the place from 73 until he passed away. It was a remarkably fast climb to the top, as from what I can find, it looks like he only joined the Institute five years before, in 
1991 working in the artifact storage. Perhaps he was simply that impressive. Certainly the Elias I know now is almost unmatched in terms of paranormal knowledge. Well, theoretical knowledge at least. And yet, everything I found out about his life before the Institute seems an ill fit with the austere man I know. He apparently graduated with a third from Christchurch College in PPE, and I found an old gossip column in the student newspaper The Cherwell that mentioned him. If I'm not reading too much into it, the implication seems to be that he was something of a pothead. <laughs> was he like that when he first came to work here? The difficulty comes from the fact that the only person in the Institute who worked here before he took over was Gertrude. Did he kill her because she knew something about his past? And if so, how can I prove it? End supplemental. I'm sorry? Are you in trouble? I'm not sure what you mean. Well, there was a policewoman asking after you. You know, the one who came to look into Gertrude. Basira, where it... When was this? Uh, uh, yesterday. You were at physical therapy. Did she say why? No. It was a bit weird, really. I've seen her around here a few times before, actually. I, um, I don't trust her. Sorry, what? Well, I asked if she had anything new to report on Gertrude, and she just said no, and then mumbled a question about when you'd be back. Then she left. It was weird. She's weird. You don't have a problem with the police, do you, Tim? Well, you do know I'm the finest cat burglar in all of Bromley. Tim. Okay, so seriously, I don't get why she keeps coming back round here outside of the investigation. She's, uh... I'm... I'm helping her with some of the investigation. Off the record. Oh. Oh. Say no more. Tim, what are you... Don't worry. I'm cool. Good work, boss. Oh, no, Tim, that's... I'll go see not what I... if I can dig anything else out on it's Scott, really and I'll let my... you know if she comes back. Yeah, that really isn't my... Oh. And supplemental. Supplemental. I had a strange conversation with Sasha earlier today. I've been doing some research into her, but there's little to go on, save that she worked in artifact storage. I decided to pay it a short visit to acquaint myself with any new acquisitions... Not much worth reporting, really. A new oak wardrobe, light is apparently unable to penetrate, a carved rock eye they keep in a black velvet bag, apparently it interferes with the video cameras otherwise, and a rather nasty-looking scalpel that is supposedly rife with the disease, no matter what they use to sterilise or disinfect it. That one's kept in a hermetically sealed plastic box. I stumbled across Sasha, staring at that damn table again. Luckily, I had the wherewithal to bring my tape recorder and managed to turn it on unnoticed. Recording follows. It's fascinating, isn't it? In the literal sense, I mean. Yes. Sometimes I can't pull myself away from it. Given recent events, I've, I've been trying to figure out if it's a fractal. No. No, it isn't. I've always seen it more like a web. I guess it has caught us in its own way. I don't think we're the first to be caught. No? I believe it caught Graham as well. I thought that was... I... Whatever crawled through his window. Unless you think they're linked somehow. I doubt it. It didn't sound like the sort of thing that would want to be bound to an object. I suppose. And we haven't seen any long-limbed stalkers, so... Let's concentrate on the table. Agreed. If you'll excuse me? Of course. Odd, but not alarming, though I think I may discuss restricting her access to the table with Elias. Oh, and I've found out where she's been going when she takes extra long lunch breaks. It seems harmless enough, but I admit I'm a bit baffled. Every few days, she travels up to Baker Street to spend anywhere from ten minutes to a full hour Madame Two Swords Wax Museum. And supplement. Supplemental. I confronted Sasha about the wax museum. It was just too strange to not mention. I tried to pass it off like I had spotted her accidentally while in the area for other reasons. I doubt she bought it, but she did at least give me an answer. She has a new boyfriend, or so she claims, who works there, and she likes to get lunch with him. It is 
plausible. And at this stage, I feel challenging her to produce said boyfriend would potentially damage what trust remains between us. No luck with any of my other leads yet, but at least I have another of Gertrude's tapes. It's always going to be a shot in the dark with them, but hopefully an informative one. I know the secret to her death is on one of them, it must be. I just... I hope I don't have to hear it first hand. End supplement. I see. Did you ever locate that basement again? Well, I wanted to, but I was supervised the rest of my time in Alexandria. Did you tell any of your superiors about it? No, I was half convinced I'd dreamt the whole thing up. And did you replace the grate? The, 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 the what? The bronze grate over the entrance to the archive. Did you replace it when you fled? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yes, yes, I think I did. Eh, one other thing. That feeling of being watched, have you ever had it since? Well, I wasn't sure whether to say anything, but yes, I have, just now. That funny turn I took on the way down the stairs, I felt it again. All those eyes watching me. <laughs> Thank you, Walter. Now, uh, I, I need to check some maps with you, but I don't think we need that on tape. Uh, are you all right here for now? Oh, well, I should be. It's unlikely to happen, but if anyone else comes down here... No, I'll tell them I'm an old friend of yours, paying you a visit. <laughs> Thank you. This statement is off the record, and I don't want anyone to bother you about it further. Let's keep it between us. Well, only two tapes so far, and already I, I don't know what to think. Another archive. An earlier version. Am I just part of a chain? A long, unending string of people who call themselves the archivist, stretching back to... Are we all destined to end up like Gertrude? Just following the same path? I need to find out more about her. One thing's becoming clear, though. She did not trust the Magnus Institute, something that I can certainly... I was just going down to the cafe. Did you want a sandwich? Uh, that, that depends. Are you, are you going to keep hovering around me if I go to the canteen? I just worry. You needed five stitches after you accidentally stabbed yourself with the bread knife. If you're still claiming that's what happened. I am. Then you'll forgive me for worrying when you use sharp knives. Oh, fine. I'll come with. Just give me a second to grab my coat. Sure. Mr. Heller died from a stroke in 2004, making follow-up on this tape difficult... But I've found a news article from March 1998, six months after the statement was taken. It reports an explosion in Alexandria which destroyed several buildings in the vicinity of Pompey's Pillar and killed 17 people. Official investigation determined it to be a gas mains explosion, but I wonder. Gertrude Robinson is not who I thought she was. End supplement. Supplemental. I broke into Gertrude's flat. I was doing some digging when I discovered that her home had not yet been re-let. A quick discussion with the agent confirmed that there were some legal delays due to the manner of her disappearance and death, and she was paid up for the next six months. So they hadn't yet cleared it out. So I broke in. It wasn't easy, and the window meant that I didn't get a lot of time before I heard sirens, but I think I got away with it. I learned a few things from this. Firstly, Gertrude lived a very minimalist existence. There was nothing in the kitchen except tea bags, a pot, a kettle, and a single mug. Her bed was neatly made, and she had a single bookshelf filled with an array of volumes, mostly on history. Judging by the bag I found nearby, I think she must have gotten rid of books once she had read them. She didn't own a television, but I did find something that piqued my interest. A laptop charger. There was no sign of the computer that went with it but the indication that she might have owned one has inserted itself rather high on my priorities list. Still, her home has given me little information in and of itself, though it continues to prove that my impressions of Gertrude could hardly have been less accurate. I'm starting to feel like the only correct assumption I made about her was that she probably liked tea. Oh, and uh, I looked through a handful of books on her shelf. They were very well taken care of, with the exception that any time a person's face was featured on the cover, their eyes had been cut out and very carefully removed.
and supplement. Say it again, please. Excuse me? What you just said, can you say it again so I have it on tape? Oh, okay. Jane Prentice is dead. You're sure? Completely? Yeah, I watched the incineration. And there were no complications? Like what? Surviving worms that escaped. Uh, movement from the body during incineration. Noises from it, like screams or chanting. Weird feelings, like a thousand tiny crawling things are moving across your skin. Wow, no, nothing like that. Just the smell, but I mean, I'll get to that. It went well. Nothing left but the ashes I gave to your friend. Which I shouldn't have, by the way, so keep it to yourself. Of course. And thank you. Sure. It's been months, though. Why are you just looking to make your statement now? Well, it's not really... It's not just burning her body. I was also the one that was first called in to deal with the nest in her old apartment. Oh. Yeah. But there are a few things I've been thinking about. Putting some pieces together and I thought, well, you guys should probably know. Right. Well, start from the beginning, whenever you feel comfortable. Statement of Jordan Kennedy regarding... Uh, several weird things I've found while working in pest control. So why make your statement now? When I helped incinerate her body, I smelled it again. Like before. It took me a while to piece the two together, but I thought you should know. Are you saying there might be more out there like her? God, I hope not. I don't know. The man from the ant house, he wasn't like her, not at all. But that smell when they burned, I think they're connected somehow. And that scares me. Yes. Yes, it rather scares me too. Supplemental. I... I don't have much to report, actually. It's been Halloween week, which means the research department is always inundated with statements. Most of them are patently false, but the volume means that they've called in the archive to assist with the overflow. It's been nice, actually. Disproving piles of nonsense felt good. Like real work, not just driving myself to distraction with conspiracy theories and paranoia. I even got a good night's sleep. I miss those days. And supplemental. Sit down. What is... Sit. It? Why did you lie to me about Trevor? What? Why did you tell me he was dead? S sorry, who's, who's Trevor? Trevor Herbert, the tramp, the vampire hunter. You told me he died. But I mean, he did, D didn't he? Apparently not. Oh, well, sorry. Sorry? I mean, I, I didn't ever actually meet him. I just heard some of the other researchers mentioning it. What? Or, well, yeah, well, I could have sworn they had said he died. I mean... Maybe they just said he looks like death or something, but I really thought they said he was dead. So that's it. Just a misunderstding. Yes. You seem to be taking this kind of person... Because you keep lying to me, Martin! About what? I don't know, but you are. Where did you get that? Have you been going through the bin? It was in the old document room, just next to where you used to sleep. Your handwriting. If the others find out I've been lying. Lying about what, Martin? I Look, just forget about it, okay? Please. I can't forget it. Everyone in this place has so many goddamn secrets and I can't trust a word you say. Not about this and not about Trevor. John, just... Martin! Okay, okay, okay. Just... Just promise you won't fire me. Fire you? Uh, fine. I... I lied on my CV. What? I don't have a master's in parapsychology. I don't even have a degree. When I was 17, my mum, she had... Look, she had some problems and I ended up dropping out of school, trying to support us. I tried everything, but no, I was hiring. So I just kind of started to lie on my applications, sending them out to just about anywhere. For some reason, my lie about parapsychology got me an interview with Elias and, and then a job here. M most of my employment details are made up. I'm only 29. Right, I... Uh, I believe you. Why are you smiling? Yes, I just... Um, I won't mention it to Elias. Just between us. So you don't mind? To be quite honest, Martin, I'm... I'm really rather relieved. John? Uh, um... What are you doing? Sasha, I, 
I can't seem to find the new file for the Hilltop Road case. I thought I gave it to you to follow up on the children. You did, and I gave it back. Ah, right. Even if I hadn't, I would very much prefer it if you stay out of my desk. Oh, of course. Sorry, I didn't realise you were still here. Or I would have asked. Of course. I'll see if it's with Tim, then. Also, John, I have asked before. What? Please, don't record our conversations. Stupid. I thought Sasha had left for the evening. I wanted to have a look in her desk for anything that might shed light on her recent weird behaviour. I didn't get much of a chance, but it all looked normal. Except uh, there were a few scraps of torn paper. They could be from files or just torn scrap paper. It's hard to tell. I'm at a loss why she would want to destroy files, though. Still, I think I probably need to back off from Sasha for a while after this. I'll just keep an eye from a distance for now. I did find several pictures of her and her new boyfriend, though. Which puts my mind somewhat at ease. Well, mostly, there's something about him that doesn't seem quite right. Something about the smile, maybe? I I mean, they're all pictures of Sasha and Tom, as I'm told his name is, having fun together. But it's hard to put into words exactly, but every one of them looks somehow like a stock photo. End supplement. Look, I've tried talking to Elias about it, but it doesn't seem to do any good. It's just under a lot of pressure. You know how messed up he's been since Prentice. How messed up he's been? Of course, I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean that you weren't. Just no, no, because I didn't start stalking my co-workers. Maybe try talking to him. Sure, like he doesn't already look at me like I'm a murderer. Okay, okay, we've just got to let him work through this. Right, I suggested therapy, but he just says no. Well, we so need to do something. Yeah, maybe. The preceding conversation was overheard on the 19th of November 2016. It reaffirms my current worries about Tim, though does go some way to reassure me that Martin is unlikely to be the culprit, especially following our earlier conversation. I need to be more careful. Supplemental. Everyone's avoiding me. They've taken to working farther away from me than normal, and when I call them for any reason, they're always keen to leave as soon as possible. They share furtive glances when they think I'm not looking. I don't like it. I feel like they're planning something. End supplemental. You don't mind if I record this, I trust? Well, to be honest, that's kind of one of the things we wanted to talk about. This is an intervention. Excuse me. If you'd rather it was an official disciplinary hearing, John, we can arrange it. Fine. Say your piece. We care about you, John. And you've been rather erratic since the Prentice incident. And we'd really like... To not have to fire you. To make sure that you're doing okay. Look, I understand I've been a bit distant recently. You were watching my house. You followed me on my lunch break and searched my desk. You said I was lying about a murder. That is to say, I... You think we killed Gertrude? No, it's... Maybe. Maybe you did. I don't know. John, this is absurd. This goes far beyond an unhealthy work environment. I'll admit it's partly my fault for letting it get this bad. I I should have stepped in earlier. You still don't believe us, do you? It's not that I don't believe you. It's just... I mean, you could have done it. Seriously, listen to yourself. Not right. We've gone a long way beyond right, Martin. There are monsters out there, and I don't know who or where they are, or if any of you... If you want me to trust you, then I'm sorry, but I need evidence. Here. And this is... A copy of all the CCTV from the week Gertrude disappeared. The police finally finished cleaning it up and examining it, and returned a copy. There aren't any cameras in the archive. But there are everywhere else, including all of the entrances into the archive, and across all of the feeds, it provides a remarkably detailed account of all of our movements over that week, even yours. And you think this gives everyone an alibi? The police certainly do, but feel free to check it yourself. Thank you. I will. And let's have no more of this paranoia. I've been examining the CCTV feeds Elias gave me. It it does seem to provide everyone with a solid alibi, and no one is seen entering or exiting the archives except Gertrude. 
At least not before Elias goes down and discovers the blood. Gertrude's own movements are somewhat erratic, and she seems to be in and out of the archives at all hours of the day and night. At some points looking rather dishevelled. That could stand closer scrutiny later, but for now I... I can't quite figure out whether this exoneration of my colleagues is more of a relief or a frustration. At the very least, it seems I have been... I have been rather unfair to them. I just hope they haven't entirely lost respect for me. One thing that does nothing to ease my mind, though, is the renewed significance this puts on the tunnels beneath the archive, as it seems more and more likely that whoever or whatever is living down there is the same thing that killed Gertrude. And supplemental. You don't mind if I record this, do you? Knock yourself out. Right. Of course, if anyone else ever hears it... You'll arrest me. No. Right. Um, so you came to deliver one of the tapes? From Basira? The, uh, the, the audio tapes. So, can I have it? Please? I'm thinking. Um, right. I thought you needed me to check them. You don't get it, do you? I'm not sure I follow. The tapes. Why is she was giving them to you? She, uh, she wanted my help. <laughs> you didn't have a tape player at your station. She thought you did it. What? We both did. Wait, you thought I killed Gertrude? Yes. Wh why? <laughs> Look at you. You're obsessed with it. Jumpy as hell, and you're the only person who benefited I, from her death. I mean, I didn't. Yeah, I know. Finally got IT to clean up the CCTV for the week she disappeared. No cameras in the archive, but we got plenty of footage of you. Watched your movements that whole week. You didn't kill her. I don't... What does this have to do with the tapes? Didn't have enough to hold you. Basira was worried you were going to run. So, what, you fed me a couple of tapes to keep me around? Yeah. And now you know I'm innocent? Hmm. I reckon we should cut you off. But Basira's soft... She likes you. No idea why. Maybe she keeps feeding you tapes doesn't involve me. I don't plan on seeing or hearing anything about it. Well, thank you, Detective Tonner. Daisy. Thank you, Daisy. Sure. If you don't mind me asking, how long have you been sectioned now? I do mind. Fourteen years. I don't suppose you'd like to make a statement. About what? Whatever you like. Fourteen years, you must have seen any number of paranormal things. And you want me to tell you about them? I... Okay. What? Okay. I'll give you a statement uh, about how I got my first Section 31. You look surprised. I mean, I was largely asking as a formality, but Sira didn't give the impression you were the sharing sort. Maybe you caught me in a good mood. Right. Well, good. Do you need me to go over our non-disclosure policy? It's not as long as you understand my policy. If it gets out, I'll break every bone in your body. There are worse things that could happen to him. What? Uh, nothing. Uh, statement of Detective Alice Daisy Tonner of the London Metropolitan Police. Uh, what's the subject? Traffic stop of a delivery van on the M6 near Preston, afternoon of 24th July 2002. Right. Thank you. Um, are you quite all right? No. I never told that story to anyone except my old sergeant. I'm not sure I... Uh, I should go. Uh, yes, of course, I'll see you out. Uh, there is one other thing. I I've been meaning to ask Basira, but you might know I'm better. I'm done. Uh, uh, oh, yes. Uh, it's just... Do you know anything about vampires? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's just that... Uh, a we... while back, there were some problems. Arrest irregularities around a few missing person cases. Suspects being released without proper interrogation. Recordings of the interviews showed the subject wouldn't say a word, but the officers doing the interview would let them go anyway. I don't know the details of the investigation, but there's a new operating procedure now. Which would be? Cases matching certain parameters have to be monitored by another officer outside the room via video. In the very specific circumstance where the suspect says nothing but the interrogating officer acts as though they have, they're immediately removed from the room. Then they call me. Just you? There are a few others around who do it, but I take care of a dozen or so precincts. I cuff the suspect's hands and legs, drive them out into the middle of Epping Forest, and burn them to ashes. There's never enough left to be a problem. I don't know if they're vampires exactly, but that's what we call them. Good lord. How many have you 
taken care of? Um, five in the last nine years. I see. Don't tell Basira. She doesn't know about that procedure. I I'm not sure how much she'd understand. She she's not cut out for that kind of work. Uh, of course, I, I won't. Don't tell her any of this, okay? I was never here. If she wants to get you more tapes, that's her business, but you keep this visit to yourself. Got that? Uh, of course. Good. Supplemental. That was an interesting interview. It seems we're not done with sinister coffins just yet. And the contents were surprising, to say the least, but don't give any real clues as to its origin, purpose, or even its relationship with Brecon and Hope. Are they simply couriers? Guardians? Hostages? At least I also have confirmation that the vampires Trevor Herbert described are not purely figments of a drug-addled mind. I probably shouldn't be too pleased to discover that there are even more violent hunters stalking us through the night, but there it is. I'll admit to feeling a bit hurt by Basira's true motivations. I suppose it's hardly surprising I've not been the most stable over these last few months. Either way, I'll not be bringing it up. Even if I wasn't genuinely somewhat afraid of Detective Tonner, such a revelation would only harm our relationship, and I need those tapes. I can't afford to have Gertrude's time at the Institute disappear back into obscurity. I'll check the one I have, and then wait to hear from Basira. Or perhaps I should try to make contact. I should really have gotten a number or something. Well, that's a matter for later. I need to go home. Try to get some sleep. I just wish it wasn't raining. End supplemental. Well, no need to rush me, Gertrude. I'm sure we've got all the time in the world. Besides, look at this dusty old thing. Spect it needs time to warm up. You don't use it much anymore, do you? Tea? God, no. Hate the stuff. Why are you here? To make my statement, of course. I know the Institute and me haven't always seen eye to eye, as it were, but I thought it was the least I could do. Why now? Well, why not? Big changes are coming, Gertrude, and I have to think about leaving something for posterity. Fine. Subject is Mary Key, recorded 3rd of July, 2008. What is it regarding? What a question. I wonder. Plenty to choose from, I suppose. <laughs> Take your time. Did I ever tell you about my first lightener? Of course, this was before he was collecting them, so back then it was just a strange book. Not to think there was a time before he'd stamped them with his mark. I feel we must have called them something. Did we even know how many there were? Or did we just think of each as a thing all its own? No, I don't recall. I met him a few times, you know. Must have been about 15 years ago. Not long before his library burned down. It wasn't all that impressive, to be honest. Shorter than I expected, and slower, somehow. I expected a whirlwind of intense energy, but... he was gentle, methodical, perfectly pleasant to talk to. Jurgen Leitner bored me. Whenever he came to look through my stock, he'd spend almost a full minute on each book, just staring at it, examining the pages, and half the time leave without buying anything. Good riddance, if you ask me. I wouldn't know. I can't say we ever crossed paths. I suppose not. You don't really go out and look for yourself, do you? Just wait here for the researchers' leftovers. It's not that bad. Sometimes someone will insist on giving me a statement directly, though I rarely see the point. Hmm. Well, they don't understand up there. They don't know what this place is. You do, though, don't you? We're on the same side, really, even if Elias disagrees. If you say so. I believe you were giving me an account of your first encounter with one of the books. Oh, of course. I was very young, but I still remember it clear as day. That does explain why you broke with the Institute. Who does the book come from? The end, of course. I could never truly serve it. I just don't find death that interesting, but I've always found a singular devotion far too restrictive. Just ask Eric. Or what's left of him. What about the other book? The smaller one? Just a bit of viscera. 
poems about dying animals also in Sanskrit. Drops a lot of bones. I, I don't even think it has a real title. Pointless, really. I eventually sold it to Leitner, though it came back to me after the attack. I should really tell Elias about this. By all means. He's not exactly big on action, though, is he? He'll just be happy I gave a statement. And do you have any proof of this? Your magic book? Here. You can keep this page. I made sure it was in English. Go. Uh, who is it? A surprise, dear. Just make sure you're alone when you read it. Goodbye, Gertrude. Wish me luck. Well, I, I don't really know what to add to that. If what she says is true, I should think carefully before reading this page aloud. I should probably destroy it. I do rather hate the smell of burning skin. Anyway, that's a decision for another day. Could rather do with a cup of tea, I think. There's a lot here. In many ways, the context this gives Mary Key's odd relationship with death is the least interesting part of it. I knew that her family was connected to Jonah Magnus and the Institute somehow, but I had no idea that Gertrude was involved, even if they didn't like each other. Maybe I should have known. Elias might not have killed her, but there is a lot he's not telling me. I'm afraid to ask, though. The Magnus Institute is not what it appears to be, and until I know what it is, and what it's for, there's no way I'm letting Elias know how much I'm aware of. But in spite of all that, I'm strangely excited, because what sticks out to me more than anything else in that tape is the very distinctive floorboard at the end. One that hasn't changed in the eight years since this statement was given. There's never been any reason to look closely at a random section of floor. This bit wasn't even breached by any of the worms. Because it had Gertrude's hidden compartment beneath it. No strange skin page. But there is a laptop. And a key. I wonder what it opens. End supplement. Supplemental. I have been attempting to access Gertrude's laptop, but have thus far had no luck. None of the obvious passwords I've tried have been successful, and I'm unsure who can provide both assistance and discretion. There may be further clues on the other tapes, but so far I've had no word from Becerra. I'm so close to finding something. Maybe I should just go down... Excuse me. Uh, do you have a moment? Miss King, how, how did you uh, how did you get in The here? new girl let me in. Are you all right? Hmm? Sorry? You look like hell. It's been a hard few months. Look, can I help you? Because if you're just after another shouting match... No! I, um... I actually do need your help. Hmm. Interesting. All right, can you not be an asshole about it? I just need access to your library. So talk to Diana. She runs the place. Yes, I don't exactly have the academic credentials you guys demand. So I apparently need someone to vouch for me. And... You're basically the closest thing I have to a friend here. We've spoken once and we ended up screaming at each other. Yes, and that's more than I have with anyone else here. Also, uh, Georgie actually has some nice things to say about you. Oh. That came as a surprise. You didn't even tell me you knew her. I... It was a long time ago, before she started doing What the Ghost. Huh. It's a surprise to me as well, to be honest. We didn't exactly part on the best of terms. Mm. What exactly do you need from us anyway? Can't your showbiz friends help you? No, I'm... Most of most of them won't talk to me anymore. What happened? Did word get out that you'd given a statement to us? What was it? Credulous idiots? Not exactly. Look, in my business, your reputation is all that you have. Hmm. The industry is mainly full of sceptics, pretending to be believers, pretending to be sceptics. I think the word you're looking for is charlatan. Can you not? Please. I'm trying to... Look, Ghost Hunt UK split up. I mean, not formally, but, well, you know, Pete was always a flake to begin with and the others just drifted away. I'm sorry to hear that. I noticed you weren't updating anymore. I tried to get a new crew together, but it was tough. I took to going on expedition solo, but I don't really have the skills to get usable footage. 
saw a few weird things. And then I then I got arrested. Go on. Yes, I am. Um, I broke into the train graveyard up near Rotherham, got picked up by security, and I, I wasn't doing well. When I was being thrown out, some late-night dog walker got a video of me screaming at them about ghosts. And when it went online... Your all-important professional reputation went with it. Yes. Look, I have leads that I really need to follow up, but as far as my colleagues are concerned, these days I'm the ghost. Well, for what it's worth, I'm sorry. I do know what it's like to lack the respect of your peers. I'll have a word with Diana, see if I can get you into the library. Thank you. Seriously. Now, uh, how do I get out of this place? Hmm? Oh, Sasha can show you out. Uh, Sasha? Uh, yes, she should be around here somewhere. Oh, right. Well, let me know about the library, okay? Will do. What a strange woman. End supplemental. You can't just come down to the station asking after I'm me. I'm sorry, I didn't think. No, you didn't. Now I've got a whole bunch of questions being asked. They're keeping tabs on me at work. I just wanted to see The it. next tape. Yeah, I get it. But right now, I can't do anything about that because I feel like they're watching me all the time. I mean, if that's the case, should we even have come down here? It's fine. It's, it's just work. But if there's one thing I've learned, it's that you and me, we suck at this whole spy thing. I need to wait until things calm down a bit. Well, keep me updated, I suppose. Yeah, if I can. Stay safe. Damn. End supplement. Are you quite all right? Yeah, just... your tape recorder. It's old. I get that a lot. I just mean, I've been thinking about analogue and digital, what we mean by them. In terms of information? Yeah, or... we use the word digital to refer to one specific way of storing information. Discrete signal values interpreted at pre-established levels. Analogue is just a fancy way of saying everything else. I, Almost uh, everything in the world is analogue, but we're obsessed with digital. We try to render everything into it, break the world down and turn it into as much binary as it takes. But it's not the same. I used to work on OCR programs, teaching computers to read, to take the messy physicality of the written word and convert it into something that a computer can understand in a digital format. I'm not sure what this has to do with my tape recorder. Right. So you work in computers, then? Sorry, I am. Um, it's been a while since I talked to someone in person. Been spending a lot of time in my own head, you know? Used to just dumping information when I get the chance. I have a blog, actually. But I haven't posted for almost a year. Almost too embarrassed to now. Assuming I'm not losing my mind, of course. Yes, I hear that a lot, too. Well, that's what's terrifying, isn't it? I mean, that's... Fascinating, Ms. Winters, but I must politely ask you to start your statement. What do you think I've been doing? Uh, traditionally, our concerns are with the particulars of the supernatural incident, its origins and manifestations. I'm giving you context. Fine. In that case, I still need to make the official notations. Statement of Tessa Winters regarding a strange computer program she downloaded from the deep web. Is that enough? Do you have what you need? I think, uh, yes, I think we do. The way you're looking at me, I'm going to assume you don't know anything more about this than I do. Not really, I'm afraid. I can talk you through some other encounters we've recorded with supposedly haunted computers, and I think one of our postgrad students is working on something about supernatural manifestations in technology, but I don't think we have anything else like this. Yeah, I figured. I just saw your post and thought, why not? And it does feel good to talk about it, you know? Yes, I very much understand. Oh, while I have you... Supplemental. It looks like my posting on a few of the more tech-savvy boards appealing for statements has worked. While the incident itself seems ultimately inconsequential, I was able to convince Tessa to have a look at Gertrude's laptop claiming to have locked myself out. I don't know what she did, something about command lines and administrative privileges, but I now have access. I'm almost afraid... Hey, where were... did you put the... Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to disturb you while you were being suspicious. It's fine. No, no, I'll catch you when you're not scheming. I need to take that turn. What? Nothing. 
I'll see you later. No. What did you say? I said there's no need for the attitude. I know things have been difficult, oh, but... Oh, they have, have they? Things have been difficult. You spent a month staring at that footage, double-checking every moment, timing every tea break, looking at me like I somehow staged it, but no, you're right. Things have been difficult. It just seems a little too convenient. Excuse me? I mean, the CCTV is so corrupted that the police can't just use it immediately and then they happen to finish restoring it just when I start really digging into the murder. And if it was an option, why not clean it up when she first disappeared? And don't get me started on the lack of cameras in the archives. I know, I know Elias's whole spiel about signal degradation and installation issues, but I don't buy it. I mean, he got the CO2 system put in easily Shut enough. Shut up. What? Shut up. Just stop. Talking. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of you. We didn't kill Gertrude, and no one wants to kill you, you pompous idiot. Now listen here. No, no. You listen for once. I was fine in research. Happy. Then you ask me to be transferred here, and suddenly it's all monsters and killers and secret passages. Oh my. And the worst thing, the actual worst thing, is that no one here has my back. With any of it. Elias doesn't care. Martin just wants a tea party. And Sasha... Oh, and, and you, you're treating me like I'm somehow to blame for it all, like I didn't suffer the worst right alongside you. Well, excuse me, if my experiences have Your been... Your experiences? Me. Fuck you! I got eaten by worms because of you. Well, what do you want? You want sympathy? You know what? Yeah, a little bit of basic sympathy would have been nice. Jane Prentice was not my fault. I did not bring her to the archives. Oh, but you went off the deep end afterwards, didn't you? Everything went to hell, and when you actually needed to be in charge, you just hid down here and played with your tape recorder. Well, what would you have me do? Anything. Anything that wasn't turning into a paranoid lunatic would have been fine. Anything that showed you could actually do your job. Well, Elias clearly Elias that... should have fired you weeks ago. What? After everything you've pulled, you should be gone. But no, instead, we all get to talk about how you're feeling, because we're worried about our stalker boss. I... I, I can't do this anymore! Then quit. If you hate it so much, leave your post in the archives. Permanently. Are you firing me? I'm offering you a chance to quit. No notice period. I'll even make sure you get the rest of the month's paycheck. Just say the words. I want to. So do it. I... can't. Why not? I... I... I, I can't. I don't know. Why can't I quit? I, I don't know. But I don't think I can fire you either. What? It's this place. I don't understand. Neither do I. I'm trying to figure it out. I've, I've got the shape of it, but I'm sorry, Tim. Truly, I am. But I cannot and will not trust you. This place isn't right. You see that now. I don't know how or why, but there is something very wrong with the archives. And I don't know who here is a victim of it and who is an agent. So what do we do? For now? I suppose we just do our jobs. I don't want to. No. I uh, suppose I'll see you later. I suppose so. And supplemental. Another tale of the elusive Mikhail Salesa, dealing in all sorts of artifacts without any decent safety measures. Unless that's the point, of course. And if I'm not mistaken, it would appear he's at least acquainted with Captain Peter Lucas of the Tundra. Whatever this grand game is, Salesa is definitely involved. I just wish I knew whether he was a player or a pawn. Or something else entirely. Surprisingly, it seems comprehensive shipping records are harder for Tim to flirt his way into than police reports. And Sasha has had her own issues with trying to access the electronic records. Supplemental. Gertrude's laptop has been rather... Interesting. Unfortunately, nothing along the lines of mymurderer.avi, and she didn't keep any sort of diary from what I can see. In fact, it doesn't look like she kept many documents at all. A few budget spreadsheets and work forms, but I get the feeling she wasn't much of a note-taker. The thing that is interesting in the budget spreadsheet is the rather large amount she requested for travel. What's even stranger is that it seems the budget was approved. Her internet history and emails reveal some more pertinent information. 
It looks like she did do a lot of travel all over the world, far further than the single basement one would expect an archivist to keep to. And in these cases, at least, she kept the receipts and the booking information. Nairobi, Wichita, Budapest, Shanghai, the list goes on. No records as far back as 98, of course, but given the pattern, I don't think a trip to Alexandria is at all out of the question. There's also the matter of the products she was ordering. There are several online orders of petrol, lighter fluid, pesticides, and high-powered torches. They are sporadic, but notable, in that she did not drive, smoke, or work in pest control. The torches would make sense, if it wasn't for the quantities in which she ordered them. She also sent orders for a staggering array of filing tabs, labels, and index markers. All different makes, formats, and systems, most of which I have encountered in various forms around the archives. Given that the doddering old lady image is now dispelled in its entirety, I cannot help but wonder if there is a reason she was keeping the files in disarray. I'm not convinced she would approve of my efforts to organize them. Part of me is tempted to follow her lead and suspend my explorations, but the more I find out about Gertrude, the less I am inclined to trust her and I am not sure emulating her is the wisest course of action, especially given the three most alarming purchases I found in her history. Gertrude Robinson was trying to buy lighteners. Seeing the account name GR Bookworm 1818 gave me a particularly hollow laugh. Obvious when you're looking for it, I suppose. It looks like she managed to get hold of three books, a special printing of The Seven Lamps of Architecture by John Ruskin, that rather dubious copy of The Key of Solomon, and a 1910 pamphlet simply entitled A Disappearance. I am quite sure none of them are in the archives, and they weren't in her flat either. I rather hope she destroyed them, especially as The Key of Solomon is something of an almanac on demonology. But my luck isn't that good. All told, the laptop has given me much cause for concern, and little in the way of hard evidence. The more I learn about Gertrude, the more I respect her, and the more I worry about her motives. Perhaps I've been focusing on the wrong question, and the most important thing isn't who killed her, but why. End supplemental. John, there's nothing down there. No, that's not true. I told you what happened. You told me you wandered around in the dark for hours at a time shortly after suffering an incredibly traumatic experience. So you're saying I imagined it? It's a possibility. The other possibility is that there's something very dangerous down there. Neither makes me particularly inclined to unlock it. So what do you plan to do about it? Send someone else? We really don't have the budget for that. So nothing? You're just going to leave it? For now, I think that's for the best. Please, Elias, I need to know. You really think that this will help? Yes. Yes, it's getting harder and harder to work down there without being sure of what's underneath me. So either give me the key, or find a new archivist. Oh, good lord, don't be so dramatic, John. You know how hard it would be to replace you. I, I don't, actually. But thank you, I suppose. I'll have a copy made for you, on one condition. Be careful. No more impetuous subterranean adventures, understand? Of course, of course. Understood. And for God's sake, get some sleep. Supplemental. I'm in the tunnels. I was exploring and I got lost. I haven't gone down any of the stairs and I, I think I'm still under the Institute. There were a, a couple of spiders, so I changed routes and found, I think it's a gas main. It must be for the whole building, but there's someone coming. And I, I don't know who else will be down here except, I mean, whatever's down here. It was, it was just checking on the upper levels. I, I didn't prepare for- John? Ah! John, is that you? Oh, Sasha, thank God. I thought you, I thought you were a, I, I don't know. What are you doing down here? I've got my coat. I noticed the trap door was open and wanted to make sure you were okay. Did Elias give you the key? Yes, he, he thought it might help to stop to some of my wilder imaginings. Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. I don't really like it down here. Hard to focus. Sasha managed to successfully navigate us out of the tunnels. Might defer future exploration for a while, at least until my... Heart rate settles down sometime in about a year. The place plays odd tricks with your mind. When I saw Sasha down there for a moment, it was like I didn't recognise her. She seemed far too tall somehow. I've locked it back up for now. 
I think I need some fresh air. And supplemental. Here you go. Sasha in today. Oh, uh, she's got the day off. Said she was spending the day with this Tom of hers. Oh, anything nice? Didn't say. Have you ever actually met him? Why would I have? We don't exactly hold socials. He sounds nice enough, I suppose, in a Kensington sort of way. <laughs> you ever met him? <sighs> no, but she's pretty private with that stuff, isn't she? Not like Tim. Just talk to him, please. I think we've said more than enough. I doubt there's much more words can do for us. You can't work together like this. Ironically, I think working is all Tim and I can do together. Look, John, like, when was the last time we all just talked? Just talked without Thank all of this... Thank you for the tea, Martin. Okay. Fine. He's not wrong, you know. I know. Statement of uh, Darren Harlow. <sighs> Supplemental. I, um, uh, I've not been back in the tunnels. I find myself, uh, let's call it what it is, I'm scared. Especially after last week's supportive exploration. And yet, every other lead seems to have dried up or given more questions without resolving anything. And short of confronting Elias with what I've found, or waiting in the unlikely hope of more tapes from Basira, I am struggling to settle on any plan that doesn't take me down into those tunnels. Down to find something that has made very clear that it does not want to be found. I should ask the others for help, but I... I can't. At best, they'd just try to talk me out of it at worst... If I'm going down there, I go alone. I should just leave it. They're right. But I can't not know. End supplemental. Notable in his account, however, is the absence of any indication that this book was ever possessed by Jürgen Leitner. It seems to support the theory that whatever these books are, Leitner is not entirely responsible for them. One other slightly encouraging piece of news is apparently IT have finally figured out what's wrong with Sasha's computer. It's been getting authentication errors when trying to connect with external devices or networks. I can't say I'm fully familiar with exactly what that means, but hopefully now the problem has been isolated, they can come up with some sort of workaround, and future investigations will be able to once again fully utilise her technical skills. End recording. Supplemental. Books. Again and again, it always seems to come back to those books. There are other artifacts that hold sinister power, certainly, but none of them seem to be quite so prevalent or insidious as those damn books. But why? I had always assumed that Leitner had created them somehow, leasing part of his own damned soul to give them power or some similar nonsense. But no, I've heard enough now to be sure that these books existed long before he managed to hunt them down. Not all of them, though, it would seem. I found something in the tunnels. I have now thoroughly explored the upper level, at least as far as I'm able. Further in, some of the passageways are blocked off or ruined by infrastructure works, pipes and drainage, that sort of thing. It may be that the lower levels would have a route underneath and back up the other side, though I've yet to make much headway down there. But shortly after I started exploring the second level, I found something. It was a room, empty except for three wooden chairs. It looked like there had previously been more, but they had been smashed. Based on the scorch marks in the corner, I think I know what they were used for. The ashes were old. Impossible to tell what they might have been before they were burned, except for the small scraps of old paper dotted about the floor. I think someone tore up a book and then burned it. There was only one scrap large enough to decipher anything legible. They have for adversaries the Zatariel or concealers, the demons of absurdity, of intellectual inertia, and of mystery. That answers the question of what happened to the copy of the Key of Solomon that Gertrude bought. But if she only bought it to destroy it, why down there? There seemed to be no especial significance to the room except that it contained some old wooden furniture. No sign of the other lighteners, though. I'll need to keep looking. End supplemental. I should probably mention this to Sasha, 
I believe she takes the Victoria line to work and has a tendency to stay later than she should. Aside from that, all that's left to do is sweep up after Ms. Gurka. She left the place rather dusty. End recording. Supplemental. Someone is living down there. In the tunnels. I'm sure of it now. I haven't found any more pages or detritus that might indicate the presence of further books, but the more I explore the lower levels, the more normal rubbish I find. Food wrappers, empty bottles, even a newspaper dated last year. They are normally quite meticulous, it seems, as those things I have found tended to be tucked away in places that might have escaped the notice of someone cleaning up after themselves. But they do miss things. I find it oddly comforting that who or whatever is down there needs to eat, as it offers some reassurance that they are at least broadly human. But why? And for how long? And how are they getting their supplies? If Becerra was taking my calls, I would ask for some police assistance, in case it's some unhinged murderer. Especially as there is every likelihood they were the one that killed Gertrude. Assuming it is only one. Yes, on second thoughts, I might well suspend my explorations until I can talk to Basira and get some assistance. End supplemental. Could you say that again? I've put you on speaker. Maxwell Rayner. Have you heard of him? Yes. Why? Who is he? He was a cult leader back in the 90s. I don't know about now. The Church of the People. The People's Church of the Divine Host. Right. Is he involved in a case or something? We're on our way to arrest him. Hello? Uh, no, I'm... Uh, yes, I'm here. You found him? Not me, but I'm one of the ones going in. There's a lot of section guys here, so I thought I'd give you a call. Any advice? Bring torches. Torches? As many as you can get your hands on. How many do you have? Um, there's a firearms team here, so we should have plenty of tactical lights. So you reckon it's going to get dark? Basira? Hello? John? John, can you hear me? <sighs> Damn. Right. Supplemental. I still haven't been back down in the tunnels, though my earlier conversation with Basira puts me in some hopes that I may be able to request help with it sooner rather than later. I'll need to wait and see what comes of this operation of hers. I rather hope that she... I hope she's okay. And part of me hopes Daisy isn't there. And supplemental. Here. Thanks. I assume it didn't go well then. We lost Altman. Just wasn't paying attention. I don't know what they're going to tell his family. Guess it could have been worse though if I hadn't talked to you first. So thanks. I'm surprised you're here. Surely you have a lot of paperwork after something like that. A lot of forms to sign. They've given us a few days compassionate leave. I think they want us out of the way while they figure out the official version of what happened. Well, I'd like to hear the real one if you're ready. Yeah. Um, how much context do you need? You said it started with a kidnapping case. Yeah, Callum Brody. The People's Church of the Divine Host. Raina was their leader back in the early 90s. I have a few statements related to them, if you're interested. Uh, Natalie Ennis was actually no, one of the... No, I'm not interested, not even a little. I've been thinking a lot over the past few days, and I'm done. With the police, with Section 31, all of it. I wanted to tell you in person and give you the statement. It seemed the least I could do. You're really quitting? Yeah, and you should too. This place, it's not right. Goodbye, John. Basira, wait. What about the tapes? What? The tapes for from Gertrude's case. Is, is there any way I get... No, I suppose not. Well, that seems to close the book on Maxwell Rayner. Maybe the whole People's Church of the Divine Host. I can't help but feel I've got the last chapter of a story and I don't even know the title. At least I hope it's the last chapter. I still can't find much about the company Outer Bay Shipping. Looks like a shell corporation, but tracking corporate ownership is not something I'm skilled at. 
I'm disappointed with Ms. Hussein's decision. It's not exactly a surprise, though. I've thought about quitting myself. It's not an option, of course. I'm in far too deep now. I get the impression that to quit would be giving up whatever small protection I seem to have here. I just wish... Oh, I don't know. Oddly enough, all I can think about is how did the police know where Rayner was keeping the boy? Basira didn't seem to know, and the church clearly wasn't expecting the police to arrive. With a few exceptions, Rayner managed to stay off the grid for two decades. How did they find him now? Someone must have known what was happening and tipped them off. And I don't think it was anyone inside that building. End supplement. Supplemental. I know who's living in the tunnels. Well, that's not exactly true. I don't know their identity, but I've seen them. Shortly after Basira came to see me, I decided not to request her help with the tunnels. It has become clear she has her own concerns to be dealing with, and I am becoming less and less convinced that further police involvement won't result in more issues down the road. So shortly after she left, I decided to get somewhat more proactive and purchased a small motion sensor camera, which I hid in view of the trap door. After a week, I reviewed the footage. It is remarkably poor quality, far below what the specifications of the setup should yield. It may be I was unfair to Elias about his difficulties setting up CCTV in the archives. Nonetheless, I was able to make out enough. For a start, I saw Sasha on two separate occasions entering and leaving the tunnels. I assume she must have gotten a copy of the key from somewhere, but it seems that when I met her down there earlier, she probably wasn't simply following me out of concern. It's not enough to confront her with yet. If she's working against us, I don't want to tip my hand too early, but I'll be keeping a closer eye on her. There's definitely something she's hiding. It may even be she knows the other individual I saw emerging from the trapdoor. As I said, I do not recognize them. They appear to be a man, or at least male presenting. Middle-aged or older, judging from the frame, but hard to be sure. They emerge around three in the morning, holding what appears to be an attaché case. Then they spend about half an hour rifling through the archives and retreat back down after stuffing a handful of files into the case. On the one hand, this does reassure me that whatever's down there is human. But what worries me is the manner they leave the trap door. Rather than picking the lock or forcing their way through, they seem to move the floor itself out of their way somehow and replace it when they return. I've triple-checked, and the area surrounding the trapdoor is completely solid. Human or not, that worries me. I will leave the camera set up for now, and hopefully gather some further information, maybe get a clearer picture of their face. Whatever this individual may be, I do not want to confront them unprepared. End supplemental. Michael Crew, The man with the lightning scar. A fractal pattern burned into his flesh, chased by the manifestation of that pattern, and then jumped out a window. So what is he now? It strikes me that wherever a person gains any sort of power from these books, often they change not just their actions, but who they are. It almost seems as though the power uses them rather than the other way round. Did Leitner's book do something to Michael Crewe? Others who encountered it reported similar feelings of vertigo to those reported by Mr. Walker, but it also puts me in mind of the fate of Robert Kelly, the skydiver who fell for far longer than he... Hello? Vasira, what are you doing here? I thought... Here. That... Are those the tapes? As many of them as I could get. I don't understand. You, you said we were done. <laughs> They're covering it up. Altman's death? Saying he was dirty, that he got what? stabbed in a botched drug deal. Wait, so the operation you went on... It doesn't was... exist. I mean, I didn't know Leo well, but it's not right, and they seemed happy enough to get me out the door. Well, I still don't understand why this leads to me getting the tapes. I mean, not that I'm ungrateful, I... Well, they're sure as hell not going to solve Gertrude's murder, so you might as well have them. Before, I... I don't know, maybe I still had enough police in me not to just steal from evidence, but now... I mean, they've rather lost your loyalty. I thought they were watching you. No, not since the Brody op. Everyone's been too busy. Daisy knows, and she's fine with it. There shouldn't be any problem until next inventory, and even then, it's only if they can be bothered with the section stuff. You should be in the clear. I... I don't know how to thank you. Um... Well, 
if I never see you again or hear about any of this, that will be thanks enough. Take care. Right. I wonder where to start. Fine, say your piece, but please make it quick. I have more pressing business. Come on. I thought we were past that. Past what? The attitude. I know I was kind of snotty when I first came in, but come on, you were no better. I can admit I misjudged this place. Can you at least give me a chance? Fine. I'm sorry. I'm glad your opinion of us has changed. My opinion of your institute. I still think you're a pompous ass. Well, this pompous ass has some very urgent work to do. So if your statement is just going to be insults, you can go back to the damn library. It's not. Look, I, I think I found something. About, what was it, grey ladies? No. Well, sort of, I suppose. Um, but that's just it. Grey ladies are just the beginning. They're the safe ones, I think. There are others. More active ghosts? Yes. Oh, good lord. Are you okay? Yes, it's not as bad as it looks. What did that? When? Just before I came in last time. And uh, best I can tell, it was a 1940s surgical scalpel. A scalpel? So, can I make my statement now? I think that might be for the best. Statement of Melanie King regarding her further researches into... I'm just calling them war ghosts. You do know what that is, don't you? Yes, I know what a meme is. You were saying? Well, that's it, really. After I recovered, they dropped the charges, and I came to you, looking to use your library. You see, I still had the serial number, and I looked up the carriage afterwards. It was from World War II, the 11th US Army Hospital train operating in the European theatre from August 1944. The train crew was actually commended for their service. But? It crashed in April 1945, derailed, killed five crew and seriously injured 14 more. Uh, there weren't any patients on board at the time, at least not officially. There was only one steel train car that avoided derailment. I see. Exactly. There's not a lot more information on it, though, and I've no idea how it ended up in Rotherham, so I came here to dig a bit deeper. Really? Our, our library is extensive, but it's hardly focused on the Second World War. No, but... The most detailed description of the crash that I could find came from the report of a man called William W. Hay, and later in life, William Hay... ...became a noted occultist whose memoirs and researches were only ever published in heavily edited form, and we have unexpurgated copies. Exactly. Did you find anything? Plenty. He'd served on the 11th hospital train as engineer, and there was a lot he had to say about it. They even let me make a photocopy. I see. So, does this mean... Yes. And I've got my plane to India already booked. Even after your experience with the hospital train, it sounds like this could be far more dangerous. Oh, thank you, but I don't need your fake concern. Fake. I've heard them talking upstairs. You know this obsession even better than I do. I just wanted to make my statement... In case you get murdered by ghosts. Yes. I understand. Thank you, Melanie. Sure. Where's Sasha, by the way? I wanted to say goodbye. I'm sorry? Sasha... Your assistant? I haven't seen her in a while. Oh, um, you didn't fire her, did you? I'm not sure I understand. She brought you down here? Oh. <laughs> no, is that another Sasha? Are you collecting them? No, no. There's just, there's just Sasha. Oh, you know who I mean. Tall, long hair, glasses. She was here when I first came in, back last April. We had a long conversation uh, about haunted pubs. Uh, no, I, I remember, but that is Sasha. Right, okay. Um, are you trying to gaslight me or something? What? No! Is this a joke to you? No, no, I... I... Because I, mean, that... I am not crazy, and I that didn't... is not the same woman yeah, I met no, before. Yes, it is! I mean, what? There is something very wrong with no. you. No! What? I, um... I haven't followed up on Melanie's statement. I just keep thinking about what she said about Sasha. She was so certain. I mean, it, it's Sasha. Obviously it's Sasha, but... Something... There's more than one thing in the files that can trick you. I can't just ignore it. So many stories about things that aren't as they appeared to be. Why Melanie, though, if... Why... It doesn't matter. 
I need to do more research. When Melanie came in, I was looking through the box of tapes Basira gave me, trying to decide where to start. Now I think... I think I have an idea. End supplemental. I found this tape while rifling through the boxes Basira provided me. It was labelled Changeling slash Imposter, and given Melanie's outburst last week, I thought it a prudent place to start listening. It is, uh... The tapes that went missing after the Prentice attack all had Sasha's voice on them. I hadn't put it together until listening to this. I don't know what this... I know exactly what this means. But I don't know what to do about it. I can't tell the others. Even if I could get them to believe me, they'd find out about Gertrude's tapes. I can't risk that. I need to deal with this myself. And that means I need more information on this thing. How it works. How it ki- I need to know how to stop it. I'm going to start by tracking down the statement by this Adelard Decker. I, I think the statements from the 90s are marginally more organized now. If it's here, if Sasha... I'm going to find out how to kill it. Statement ends. I found this in the folder marked 9910602, where Gertrude's tape had indicated I would find the statement of Decker himself. There is nothing else in there, but I think it tells me what I need to know. This thing, this... Not Sasha. It's tied to the table. It... I found the tapes. I thought was... it was pronounced Calliope. They were on her desk. Well hidden, but... If I'd been a bit more thorough, if I... It's just a scratch, John. I'll be fine. Can we begin? Was there anything I could have done? Could I have... Hello? I see you! Show yourself! Hello? I see you! I see you. And now I see you. You wanted to see us? Are you okay? You look awful. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm coming down with something, I think. Listen, you should take the rest of the day off tomorrow as well. Are you sure you... Don't want to right? infect anyone else. Best you stay home. Wouldn't it make more sense if you went home then? Are you feverish? We should probably get you to a doctor. Look, there's a walk-in centre no, nearby. I can... No, no. I have things I still need to take care of here. And besides, I know you've both been under a lot of pressure lately. I think we could all do with a bit of a break. Well, well yeah. I, 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 mean... I know, I know. A lot of it's been because of me. Most of it. I'm, I'm sorry. Tim, I know things have been fraught. <laughs> Guess that's a word for it. Yes. Well, I think some time off could only help. Because you're ill? Yes. Yes, I, and I'm... I'm sorry. About everything. John, look... Okay, you... right you are, John. We'll be going. Wait, what? Come on, Martin. We could do with a break. Uh, do you need us to tell Wait. Sasha... Oh, no, no, Tim, I'll be seeing her later. See you Monday. Uh, yes, oh, no. see you then. Hang on, Tim, we should probably... If either of you hear this, I'm sorry. You deserve the truth. I wish... I'm not losing anyone else. It is remarkably easy to buy an axe in central London. Harder to sneak it into artifact storage, but not impossible. I don't know if destroying this is going to kill that thing, but I am damn sure it's going to hurt. <coughs> <coughs> Just... Just cobwebs and dust. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> that was very stupid. What do you want? There's no other way out of this room, you know. What? You don't have time to escape before they get here. No, there's not so. No, but the table was... was binding it quite effectively. Oh. Even with oh, all no. the protections you have oh, here, no, 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 no. I doubt you can survive them now. Uh, I you need I, I, uh, a door. No. No, I, I, I just... I, I need... Uh, Shit! <laughs> <laughs> Streets by Martin K. Blackwood The streets are hard in London, paved in old secrets, the hot smell after the rains, the threads of people walking, living, loving. You're sure about this? He did tell us to go home. Yeah, and then he said, sorry for everything, something's up. You don't think he's going to, you know... I don't know, but he's going to do something and it's going to be bad, and I don't mean like sneaking a cigarette bad, like properly bad. So we need to help him? We need to stop him. And we needed my tape recorder because... because... something tells me we're going to need evidence by the end of today. I don't want to wind up in court without something to back me up. Court? Yeah. A tribunal if we're lucky, inquest if we're not. You did use a new tape, didn't you? Yeah, I, I took one off the pile. Was it blank or... Tim? It was blank. He's never going to speak to us again. Don't get my hopes up. John? And he's gone. Thought so. Oh, you don't think he's going to... I don't know, Martin. I, I think he's going fully off the deep end is what I think. If he hasn't already... Look, I know you don't like him. You got that, did you? But I'm not going to help you get him fired. Martin! What do you think is happening here? This isn't office politics. It's not like he's had one too many at the Christmas party and started ranting about the Greeks. Whatever is happening here, it's literally supernatural. Really? Isn't that a little, you know? No, it isn't a little, you know. There is something in this place and it's messing up our heads. It watches us all the time. It stops me quitting. I'm pretty sure it would stop Elias firing John, even if he decided to actually try running this place for once. You sure you don't just want to stay? I'm sure. But like, deep down... No. Maybe... Oh. So you really think the Institute is, what, haunted? I used to, but... Now I think it's worse. Worse how? Oh, oh God! Oh, what the hell was that? Oh, no, 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 no. What the hell was that? It, uh, it, uh, it kind of looked... Oh, don't kinda, say it. It did though, didn't it? No, uh, that wasn't Sasha. No, 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 it wasn't. Oh, you, you, don't, you don't think... He told her to go home, like us. Yeah. And she did. Yeah. It went into the tunnels. No. No. Not happening. We can't just leave him. Yeah, we can. I'm going. Martin. My, I'm not coming down there with... Fine. Michael's door, it was that office, the thing that was pretending to be Sasha, it opened into the tunnels. The tunnels. Not exactly the escape I was hoping for. I'm hardly surprised, must be its idea of the joke. Still it is. It is a head start, I suppose. I have no idea where in the tunnels I am, or how far down. At least it didn't leave me trapped in some corridor hell maze. A different corridor hell maze, at least. So I suppose I just... I just wait for now. I don't think it's going to just give up. And I can't risk attracting its attention. It might already be down here with me. Just stay quiet. Stay hidden. God, I'm an 
idiot. Smash the table, kill the monster. Stupid. Lazy, sloppy assumption, of course, the table was binding it. The table is webs and spiders. Spiders are something else. They don't help each other. They oppose. They, they weaken. It was caught in a web. And I... All the pieces were there, and I just... I couldn't see it. You see 
seem stressed, John. You've been under a lot of pressure. You should talk about it. Have a real good chat. You like talking, don't you, John? Institute anymore. What was that thing? I'm trying to not to think about it. It makes my head feel weird. Well, we, we, which way do you think? Uh, uh, right. Let's go right. Fine. I don't think this thing's working properly. It keeps making this weird noise. time we have. So you said. Is that necessary? You think I pose a danger to you? Yes. Yes, I do. Then take it with you, but I can't afford to just sit here. So talk fast. Could we at least have this conversation in the tunnels? I'm not going back down there. 
That thing, it, is it dead? Unlikely. Whether something like that can actually be destroyed, it is trapped, I hope, for a very long time. And Sasha, the, the real one. Was that her name? I'm afraid she's gone. Whatever it does to those it takes, they don't come back. She's dead. Do you need a moment? No. No, I'm... You're not what I expected. I suppose not. My family emigrated when I was very young. English was always my first language. I used to adopt an accent sometimes when meeting people. A sort of personal joke. But truth be told, my Norwegian is terrible. Now, are you going to help me or not? You first. You want my help, you answer my questions. Agreed? Agreed. Good. Good. Statement of Jorgen Leitner. February 16th. 2017. Statement begins. You're quite like her, you know. I suppose that's no surprise. Anyway, your questions? Right. Let's start with what you did down there, how you trapped it. An unexpurgated copy of Ruskin's The Seven Lamps of Architecture, published in 1845. Of course, Ruskin didn't even begin writing the book until 1846, and the text of this one varies markedly from the version that was distributed. It gives an acute sense of the walls pressing in around you, and if consumed recklessly, will physically entomb the reader. Over the years, I have found that it interacts with Smirk's architecture, and those tunnels specifically, in a more predictable way. By carefully reading specific passages in certain locations, I am able to exercise a degree of control over the substance of the tunnels. I didn't hear you say anything down there. I said reading. It doesn't need to be spoken aloud. Right, so you can change the tunnels? I can, though even setting aside the obvious dangers, it's a time-consuming and imprecise process that said, I will admit that when you began to explore again, I closed off certain passages and remade others. I, I wanted to keep you contained while deciding whether to make contact. You moved the tunnels for me? The upper levels, yes. Made them more rational, actually. Uh, it didn't strike you as odd that you were able to map them in a matter of weeks. I thought I was just getting a sense of the place. I suppose you left the rubbish around for me as well, giving me hints. And the arrow. No. I thought I was being very careful cleaning up after myself, but you have keener eyes than I gave you credit for. I should have expected that, I suppose. The arrow, however, was not mine. The... not Sasha had come down several times. I suspect it was almost as curious about me as you were. Perhaps it thought you might have better luck flushing me out. I suppose, in a way, it was right. In retrospect, using the seven lamps so much was perhaps unwise. It is possible I am balanced Smirk's architecture somewhat, however cautious I might have tried to be. And the other book? Hardly a book. Barely twelve pages. It is entitled A Disappearance. If read cover to cover, it removes one from the world. I can't say precisely what that means, only that the assistant I assigned to it, Jacob Feng, was never seen again. I have found, however, that reading only one or two words is sufficient to hide me from the prying eyes of your master. It allowed me to talk with Gertrude in relative safety, and occasionally come above ground for my own ends. My master? We'll get to that. How long have you been down there? Oh, hard to say. I've been in hiding for over twenty years now, ever since my library was destroyed. Obviously, I have not spent all that time below your institute. The old Millbank prison tunnels stretch out a very long way, and there are other entrances than the one below the archives. I have a small number of 
secure locations, though since Gertrude's death I have been reluctant to leave the tunnels. I dislike spending too much time in the open. I am always being hunted, both by creatures like the ones you have encountered and by certain human individuals who believe I am to blame for the books that destroyed their loved ones. Three years ago, I made the mistake of spending a full night outside my safe houses. I was almost beaten to death by an angry goth. <laughs> That'll be our Jared. I don't follow. I wouldn't worry about him. He passed away a couple of years ago. That is hardly my point. So are you to blame? For what? For the books. Or did you just stick your name on them by accident? Why the library of Jürgen Leitner? You're right. About which part? You were a fool. Hmm. Why didn't you burn them? Pride. If they were destroyed, what was I to guard? Even so, I don't believe that would have solved as many problems as you think. Many of them wouldn't have burned, and some even liked the flames. And those that did, I now believe, would have been released to take a different form. But you didn't know any of this when you had almost a thousand of them in your care. I've spent twenty years trying to learn from my mistakes. You said you didn't take any of them with you, so where did you get these? When I started working with Gertrude, she hunted down some additions I thought might help. And why was Gertrude helping you? Aside from my knowledge about the books, I think she was lonely. I didn't meet her until about six years ago, after she'd lost the last of her own assistants. She would mention them sometimes. I believe she missed having someone to talk to on occasion. I, I didn't know Gertrude had assistants. Of course. Three of them, each meeting an unpleasant end. So, when she found me, it seemed natural that we help each other. In this instance, that meant finding certain useful books. Like the Key of Solomon? That one was a mistake. I thought that in the tunnels there might be the stability to examine it properly, learn something of the forces arrayed against us. But it went wrong. We had to destroy it. I should have known, really. It was one of the few volumes that contained elements of several different powers. You keep talking about these uh, powers, these forces arrayed against you. What are they? I'd hoped you would at least know that much by now. But I suppose you're simply the observer, and making these connections is not your role. Gertrude could be much the same at times. Just tell me! There are... Entities in this world, beings of vast, dark power. Perhaps it would be more accurate to say they are next to the world rather than in it. Their true existence couldn't function in the universe we live in, at least not as it is now. They have nothing in their pure state that could be present in the physical world, so they sit in... Different dimensions? No, I don't think so. If there are such things, then these beings are linked inexorably to ours. They're not within our world, but they can affect it in certain ways, reaching out with their will to change things. I don't know where they come from, or how they came to exist, but they are, from what I can determine, effectively eternal. Are you, are you trying to tell me all of this is at the behest of evil gods. Oh, there are certainly those who see them as gods. A few even go as far as to try and worship them, but I don't find it helpful to think of them like that. Perhaps you could liken them to one of the old pantheons, each with its own rituals, agendas, and spheres of influence, but I find simplifying them in such a way makes them hard to truly understand. The gods were conceived by humankind as a reflection of themselves. Their motives and actions divinely powerful, but in essence, purely human. These... things... I find them hard enough to understand without trying to force human frameworks onto them. 
So the creatures are, are, are what, priests? These books, they're holy text? I told you it was an unhelpful analogy. Let's try another one. Um, imagine you are an ant and you have never before seen a human. Then, one day, into your colony, a huge fingernail is thrust, scraping and digging. You flee to another entrance, only to be confronted by a staring eye gazing at you. You climb to the top, trying to find escape, and above you can see the vast, dark shadow of a boot falling upon you. Would that ant be able to construct these things into the form of a single human being? Or would it believe itself to be under attack by three different, equally terrible, but very distinct assailants? So the books, the monsters, they're part of these beings. Just extensions of them, fingers being pushed into our world. The books are, I think, their essences in a purer form. The other things that stalk us, from what I know of them, they have varying wills of their own. All in service of the thing they're a part of, but not directly controlled by the mind beneath them. At uh, least in as much as these entities have something we could recognize as a mind. Like a, a, a muscle spasming on reflex. Yes, that's actually rather good. It would explain Michael's identity issues. Michael? Oh, that, that's what the distortion calls itself these days, isn't it? That one is part of a power that my assistant Domingo used to call Esmentiras, which I believe translates as it is lies or it is lying. At the time, of course, we just used it as a way to classify books. I call it the spiral. It deals in fooling the senses, in making you see and hear things that are not there, in drawing you into mazes and making you doubt your own sanity fractals. Yes. It seems to have a particular fondness for them. What about bones? Does one of them manifest with, with bones? <sighs> You're thinking too literally. Examining the physical categorization, but ignoring the meaning of the thing. What are the bones? In the distortion, your Michael, the structure of a skeleton, an established reality in your mind, is twisted and warped into an impossible form. But in other cases? Are they a symbol of slaughter and butchery? Are they the familiar made wrong? Or are they simply part of the messy physicality of flesh? Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, this is a lot to take in. Well, do so quickly. We've wasted enough time on your questions. Fine. Then I'll make this one simple. Did you kill Gertrude? No, don't be absurd. Then who did? This is a distraction. You're in no danger. Who? I believe it was Elias. What? Why? I assume he discovered we were planning to destroy the archives. Gertrude was going to destroy the archives? This is why I need those files. I've searched this place thoroughly and they're not here. So I assume Elias took them when he killed her. I need your help to get into his office. But the cameras, they showed him. Simple mechanical eyes, in his place of power. You think he can't control everything they see? Assuming such interference wouldn't ruin them beyond recovery, of course. This place belongs to one of them, doesn't it? You know the answer to that. The eye. I have also heard it called beholding. And I... You belong to it, too. I, 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 I think I need some air. We don't have time for you to have a breakdown, archivist. I'm going to have a cigarette. Don't... Don't. I'm not sure you would have liked him, you know. He's paranoid enough. But I don't think he's got the stomach for it. Well, this is a surprise. Reach for a book and I will kill you. How much have you told him? Enough. About Gertrude? No, no, I didn't have time. 
I've wondered for so long who it could be down there, who was helping her. I honestly never would have guessed. How did you know I was here? I didn't. You're very well hidden, but John is not. And he failed to take the same precautions I'm sure you took for granted with Gertrude. I knew he was talking to someone, and it turns out to be Jürgen Leitner himself. <laughs> what an honor. Elias, please. What did you want from him? The files. The ones you took from Gertrude. Planning a little light arson, are we, Jürgen? It's not just the Institute, and you know it. They had everything she had found on the stranger. I know. It's, um, what do they call it? The unknowing. <laughs> Creativity never was their forte. You, of all people, should want to stop them. And we will. But I don't think we'll need your help. And what's he going to think when he gets back? Well, he was always going to need to fly the nest at some point. Go out and see the world for himself. He might die. It's always a danger. Almost always. Elias, it doesn't have to be like... <coughs> Sorry, I've been queer for five years now, but this... Oh. Huh. <laughs> I need to, um... I, I need, um... Oh. I think it's working again. Tim. Where, yeah. where were we? Yeah, it's recording. Forget the bloody tapes, Tim. Are we sure this is... this is here? Yes, because the tape works now. How long was it? I don't know. I don't care. Sorry, sorry, what? How can you not care? Because this is us now. Worms, monsters, corridors. They'll keep happening until one of them kills us, and we've just got to deal with it. sign of the woman. I don't think so. She could have helped her. No. But we could have tried. How? Look. Look, there's no point talking about it. It happened. I hope it doesn't happen again. The statement fucking ends. We, we should look for John. Maybe we can still help. days, at least. I can't just... Sit here moping. Probably already killed him. Don't joke about that, okay? Fine. Tim! Try his office. Yeah. Right. John? Oh. Oh no. I told you he was gonna do something like this. Oh, no, no. Who is it? I told you. Oh, John. What have you done? <laughs> 